All right, team. So this week we had a user have a bit of a problem on their phone um, and we tried to debug it, but obviously we didn't have any tools there available for us to use. So today we're gonna to install um, a package called highlight.io um, um, and it's a full stack monitoring platform. So let's jump in and have a look at what we're gonna do. So the platform we're gonna have a look at is highlight.io and what it features is session replay, error monitoring, monitoring, error monitoring, logging, and it's also open source. So that's really cool. And the session replay is really interesting. We've used this in the past. We used an app called Full Story, but allows you to watch how the users interact. Um, and then you can grab any console and network errors. And you can also watch what's happening. So it's, it just makes it much easier to debug when you don't have a device um, on hand. So let's jump in and install that and get going. All right, so to get started, we're gonna click the get started button and see how we install this. All right, so we're gonna sign up with Google. All right. All right, so we're gonna select Next.js and then what we're gonna do is install Highlight run next, highlight run, and highlight run react. That's a bit strange having copy include the comment. All right, so now that that's installed, we can run our app again. Um, so the next piece is grab the project ID, which it looks like it's injected here for us. Um, original page router, so we can grab this. We're going to put it into in your app TSX file there. Sorry, there we go. So we're going to import highlight init. And then we're going to wrap highlight init. Probably just round the whole thing. Oh, and this looks like, okay. So we can shove this one. Now let's just see in your app TSX file. So I guess we can put that anywhere. Might just put it underneath the tracking here and just do it straight under there. And realistically, we're gonna to wanna to move this project ID into a environment variable so that we can save that for later. So let's do that quickly. Um, so we're gonna chuck it into the ENV. So this will be Highlight, and this will be highlight API key. Oh, sorry, not API key. It's going to be the app ID, project ID. All right. Then we will copy that and put it into our ENV file. All right, so we've dropped that into our ENV file. Okay, so because this is sitting in here, this will actually be, it's going to be in here, it's a, it's a public. So we're going to go, we have to prepend with next public. Okay. All right. Once we've added that into our um, environment, we're now going to do const highlight like this, and then we're gonna grab that, and then we're gonna use this in here. And now we need to just restart our server to pick those changes up. The error boundary. This is in the app as well. Login logic here. Okay, so I think let's just add from here. What's this saying? We'll just wrap this component in error boundary as well.
All right. Cool. So we'll group those together. All right, so we've got a highlight here. We've got the error boundary. Now we can do identify users. Identify users after authentication flow. Yeah. Okay, so where can we put this piece now? Um, so it's underneath the session provider. I wonder if we do it in the mobile layout. Okay, I'm just I'm just thinking on how to do this piece where we could we could shove this in. Um because we our app isn't behind a wall always. Um so I wonder highlight run. So let's if let's grab this and I think mobile layout. So I think we can we can get that here. So let's do it in here. So we'll we'll use session here. And let's just see what we have. All right, let's run this. It's running and let's just see what we're getting out here. We've got our user session here, right? So that's all good. Um, so we can use it there. We could also um, create a component, which would be uh, for logging this. I think for now I'm just going to leave it in this. I'm going to leave it in this comp in this component for now, just for simplicity, so we can get up and running. So, from highlight run, we're going to grab that. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say I'm going to go. I, I'm just going to create a, com a component here. I'm going to say um, identify um, session user. I'm going to create a component for this, just to keep this all separated. So we're going to use this here and then get rid of that and then here we're going to grab this. So we'll leave mobile data untouched and then we're going to go in here and we're going to grab session data. doesn't bring in any props this guy. Um, so this is identify session user and what we're going to do is this. I'm actually wondering if this is happening in, it just almost feels like this is happening, it says doing a client side context. It's super, super odd here. This is almost like when you hit a login button. But anyway, so we'll just do it in here and import this. All right, so we're gonna say, if no, no session data dot user dot ID, return null. Otherwise, we're gonna identify the user um, so we don't have phone, don't have that. So what do we have? We have the user. So I'm going to go console log dot session data. And let's put this in to our app. So we're going to grab this component and we're now going to just shove this right next to here okay we just need to always return something so we're going to return null here again yep okay let's just check we haven't broken anything all right it's all good and we should see here's our session okay so inside of the user we have the email address so we can grab that so this will be session data dot user dot email or that and then the ID will be the ID of the user so it's this alright so it's session data dot user ID alright and then this will be this should never happen but just to make TypeScript happy so let's just see what happened when we added our package highlight run so all those things are dependency, so that's just um, VS Code being silly. Um, all right, so we are now identifying the user. And that should probably fire off some sort of request. Here we go. There we go, so it's initialized, and then it's now busy tracking. Great. All right, verify. Check your dashboard for a new session. So let's see what we have. There we go. Ken's currently in the page. And we can see what it's doing. 
if I scroll, click, great. Now if we watch this, how do we watch this? You can see how the mouse is moving. That's very cool. Now what I'm interested in, seeing the dev tools. So we can actually watch. See, this is, our, this is really cool now. So we can see every request that's made every console log that happened that we're recording console log uh, not recorded on localhost okay there we go so console logs are not recorded in localhost but so it's it's out of the box shows console logs so if we get an error or something breaks in production we will now get this inside these sessions so you can see it's a very this was very easy to set up obviously but it's a very cool way of watching logs and checking and tracking our app and making sure everything's working. So what I would also want to know is how is it possible to manage the the back end? So this is front end, back end error monitoring. So JS next. Enable monitoring in JavaScript. Next JS on the back end with highlight client so we want server instrumentation so how do we do this next build id all right so we're gonna let's add it now for the back end because this is also where we want to catch any errors so let's chuck this in so we're going to install next build id and what i want to see is what is next build id git based build id for your next app that's cool so let's grab that chuck that in turn on instrumentation hook there and wrap okay so let's run this again we'll go into our next config cool so we use the mjs let's close all these off all right so we've got the mjs here so we are going to use the mjs version so we need these two all right now we wrap our entire config so that can just happen down here we can wrap all of this hopefully all right so what do we need to do here um we need directory name so we can do this And then we need to generate a build ID. So that will be there. And then we need to turn on the instrumental hook, instrumentation hook, sorry. And then we need to turn on production source, production source maps true. Right. So that's all of that. And then we export credit instrumentation TS at the root of the project. Let me just double check that as so this. All right. And then we are going to do, where is it here? What is this constants file? Okay, so that's not real. So we don't use that. We use process.end. Okay, that's that piece. And then if you're using it for our copy. All right, let's see if our app still works. All right, looks like we're still good. Looks like we're still feeding in some good stuff here. Very cool as well, because like you can see when we're doing this live tracking, we can actually see the screen size that the user was on as well. So if anyone's like, I can't see this thing, you could check very easily. And then also when you're using Vercel, you can install this highlight Vercel integration. So I'll probably do that as well. So we'll add that integration to um, the locked and lifted project. I mean, let's add it to all projects in locked and lifted. My four by four, done. Easy, that's very easy. Sweet. All right, I think that's it. So, now we can monitor the user's errors in the production environment and we can actually help debug. We spent a lot of time going back and forth over Instagram asking questions and this is a much easier way to do so. So hopefully you found this one helpful and happy debugging.